Okay, so this is what a civilian can do in a Czech Republic. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is really interesting. Hi everybody and welcome to my second videos about firearms in Czech Republic. As I said in the first video, Czech people have the right to carry a firearm. I wanted to know more, so I went to Prague to interview some citizen who choose to carry a firearm. In the second part I want to know the answer to these questions. How does the firearm law work in Czech Republic? Where can you carry a gun? Why they have this right in Czech Republic, while it's not common at all in Europe? I start my video with Alex, a police dog handler, who is an expert of firearms because he has been a gunsmith and he worked in a gun shop for many years. Here a civilian applies for a permit. Uh, you must have a clean record, you must be healthy, uh, you must pass an examination and a practical test and a shooting test. Then you get, uh, you get this permit from the police and you can acquire a firearm. And uh, after you purchase it, you have to register it. You register it at the local police. And uh, basically after that, you can carry it on you. Uh, according to the Czech laws, you can carry uh, up to two firearms concealed. It's uh, only guns or also fire, um, rifles? Um, well, here the law is uh, not specifying. It's not specifying whether it is a long or a short firearm. Uh, basically, anything you can uh, conceal in a proper way uh, can be carried. Hypothetically, you can carry a short uh, rifle if it's well concealed, and then uh, it is according to the law okay. And this is something I heard. So here you can also bring a knife around? Yes, there is no limitation so far on any uh, knives. Uh, uh, it is a common thing in Czech Republic to carry a pocket knife. Uh, you can carry a pocket knife, you can carry a fixed blade knife, uh, no limitations so far. But uh, when the law allows you to use it? Uh, there are uh, specifically uh, specified situations uh, when the law allows to use the firearm. Uh, uh, it must be uh, the defense mechanism of the last resort when everything else has failed or when there is no other chance, no other possibility. It is the protection of life. Protection of life, health and property in this order. Okay, uh, of course, uh, it is a very hard situation to judge because uh, usually these incidents take seconds or split seconds and the uh, uh, firearms owner has to make his decision also knowing that there will be investigation and in case he exceeds his rights, uh, he use, uses excessive force in an inadequate situation, uh, he might face charges. In most of Europe it's not so easy or common to bring a weapon around. People usually say, I don't need it because uh, if something happens I can call the police. Mm. What, why you think is not enough? <laughs> uh, okay, uh, um, since I work in the, in the law enforcement, I know that police and law, law enforcement are not supermen. Uh, they cannot be everywhere. Uh, their job is hard and uh, deserves respect, but uh, they have their limitations. The other thing is, uh, these people are usually issued uh, standard weapons by the government and the training is paid by the government and uh, in many cases also the media tries to portray them as uh, like some uh, special forces. Uh, most of the law enforcement members, uh, the training is uh, less than what I get as a civilian. So technically it's safer to have some civilians with weapons around you than police? Uh, in some cases, I think that uh, that many civilians I know <laughs> uh, have better training than the law enforcement. <laughs> it is a sad fact, uh, but this is what happens when you're uh, in a state-owned company. <laughs> but so I mean, because in Prague there are many tourists. Tourists probably don't know, but technically, I don't know their guide, the pub owner, the restaurant owner, the restaurant waiter, the people that they meet uh, as a tourist could have a weapon. There is a big possibility that they have. Especially people who own businesses, they often have a firearm because uh, businesses are often target of burglaries. This factor really surprised me. I don't think that many tourists know that they probably walk near armed people all the time while they are in Prague. 
Now I want to know more about the guns that Czech people usually carry. Most common weapons in Czech Republic are weapons by uh, uh, Czech's arm manufacturer, the CZ, and uh, uh, Glock, which is an Austrian company. Uh, this weapon is, uh, this pistol is very common among gun users and law enforcement. Uh, this is a Glock 19, which is a compact pistol, but it's still a full-size pistol, which has a thick magazine, um, which involves two uh, uh, double stack, which means the ammunition there is stacked beside each other, oh. which allows bigger capacity, uh, but the concealment is worse because mm. the firearm is thicker. Mm. Okay, I will place it here. Uh, and then there are uh, micro compact or sometimes they call them slim firearms, which are firearms uh, that basically have uh, the same type of ammunition, same caliber as full size pistols, uh, but their magazines are slimmer mm. with less capacity. Mm. They're uh, so called single stack, which means there's only one line of ammunition above each other. You can carry it in the outside waistband uh, holster or inside waistband ah. holster. Can I see? I'll show you on this pistol which I carry the most of the time uh, when I carry. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the inside waistband holster which allows you to tuck the firearm behind your uh, belt. Hmm. Okay, so I place the firearm in the holster. Okay, uh, it's ready to carry so it's loaded. Now, uh, I loosen the belt a little bit so that I can fit it in here. And I place the firearm inside the pants. The clip goes over the belt. Then you fasten your belt and the firearm is inside your pants. So nothing sticks out from under the, uh, under the belt. And when you put your garments over it, basically the weapon is concealed. There are, there are different ways of carrying a firearm. You can carry it loaded with a magazine loaded, mm -hmm. but no round in the chamber. Okay. And you can carry it loaded with a magazine and a round in a chamber. Now, so you can uh, do it chambered? With yes, a, you can do chambered. With, uh, uh, you mean with, with a ball, bullet uh, inside? Yes, that, which means that, that uh, the, uh, the, the round is in the chamber. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do when you unholster a pistol in a, a situation like a self-defense situation you just unholster you point and you pull the trigger okay take out the safety maybe uh, some guns have uh, automatical safety some guns have safety which you have to uh, disengage uh, manually uh, modern guns today uh, tend to use as little controls as possible. Mm. The safeties here uh, though um, are very thorough uh, even though you don't see them. One of the safety is this small uh, mm. tongue sticking out of the of the trigger. Mm -hmm. The trigger, now the trigger is cocked so uh, if I pull it properly it will hit, the, the striker will hit the primer and the bullet will discharge. Uh, but if I don't hit the uh, trigger with my full finger oh, okay. it, doesn't work. it doesn't work there is this little tongue I have to press and now mm -hmm. if I press it properly with my full finger mm -hmm. I'm pointing in safe direction yeah. so nothing will happen mm -hmm. the firearm has discharged during this discussion I remember that in the old James Bond movies Sean Connery often carried his gun under his hermit do people still do it? Uh, uh, these holsters are very outdated. Uh, they are not used anymore. Very few people use them. They are more of a 70s, 80s thing. Uh, the problem with such a holster is that when you are drawing your weapon from there, at some point you are pointing your weapon at everybody behind you. Because if I will, if I will get this weapon clear. So hypothetically my weapon is like that. If I want to draw it, I won't be drawing it like this. Okay. So the point is, I'd be drawing it like this hmm. and outside. And if I'm pointing at that target, so now I have pointed my weapon behind me and now I have tagged everybody around me with that hmm. weapon. So everybody who's standing in this sector has been uh, facing the muzzle of the weapon. So the best way to carry is on the waist and when you point your, your, your you draw your weapon, 
you only point at the ground and towards the target. So it's the safest way of uh, carrying and drawing and pointing a weapon. Unfortunately, James Bond was wrong. After this sad news, I wanted to understand why in Czech Republic they have the right to carry firearms. Is it something cultural? Something related to the history of the country? I asked this question to Lance. He works in IT and is also a firearm expert. And this is a? Yeah, this is a Beretta 92. Mm. Oh, okay. This is the Model SB. I am somewhat of a collector, so this one is fairly interesting because it's actual Italian uh, firearm from the military. You can see the uh, military acceptance mark here oh, okay. on the trigger guard. Okay. So it was uh, handed to the Italian military in 1986. Hmm. Okay. And why do you think the Czech Republic is so as um, this situation that mm. it doesn't exist in other European countries? It's something cultural, historical? Maybe. Because the Czech uh, firearms history goes all the way back to uh, the Hasid rebellions which are uh, 15th century, 16th century, something like that. I don't remember exactly. But uh, it's one of the first uh, large-scale uprisings and uh, wars that were fought with firearms in Europe. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, uh, for example, firearms terminology is actually derived from the uh, what were names of some uh, firearms they were using, for example, pistol, is uh, probably used from uh, the Czech word pistola, which was a type of firearm, aside of being a word for flute, mm. it's a type of firearm that was used during the Hussite rebellion times. Oh, okay. Everything, every major war, every major conflict that swept through Europe usually came through here. The Napoleonic War, the Second World War, yeah, the exam, uh, the exam would be the First World War, but we were in the Austria-Hungary and we sent our guys uh, to the front. So there was this experience that not swept the land, but they were guys who were taken and they were returned uh, after seeing the horror of First World War. Mm. So, yeah, there is like a lot of history when Czech people were used and abused and I think it goes with some sort of mentality of not anymore. Mm. We don't really want to go through this. Mm. We, we went through many occupations during the Second World War, during the Soviet era, 1968. Uh, we were attacked by our supposed allies and occupied until 1989. So uh, maybe also you want to have weapons because so it's safer if there is an attack from another state, maybe? Possible. The Swiss are doing it and it works pretty good for them. The people who are in favor of the right to carry a firearm often say that this right is necessary in order for the people to defend themselves from a dictatorship. If the population is armed, they cannot be easily attacked. Many people disagree with this point of view because they say that you cannot defend yourself from a dictatorship or from a foreign country by using few pistols. In Czech Republic they worry about this and a few months ago they started to create what I would call a militia. Teresa, who we met in the first video, is a member. I asked her to show me her gear and what is the militia supposed to do. So this is the 9mm. Ah, okay. This is for short. Cartage. Short. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they are uh, the more? two long gun, okay. two, two, three. Oh, so so you can just bring uh, in the cart like this. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is my Arsenal. training stuff. <laughs> yes, this is the the long one. Mm -hmm. It's the nail defense. So that's my favorite. My protect vest. Oh, okay. They are everything is in ballistic oh, okay. protector. So you can see the magazine for oh. the long gun, okay. the uh, magazine for the short gun as well. Okay. But obviously you can do this only in the shooting range, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. This is the belt. 
This is a Glock. Oh. Okay. There is a light as the well. Light. Why they want their people to be so well armed and prepared? Uh, I think it helps uh, the situation on Ukraine as well. Mm. So uh, it's, uh, I think, for me, it's a huge step, uh, like uh, be back up for mm. my land. And I'm very proud of that. Okay. So it's for war. I mean, they do it because yes, in the case of yes, war, yes. people... Yes, where uh, will be here any bad situation, uh, some bad guys uh, will take the stuff from the shops, you mm. know, and there will be a really dangerous situation. Mm. Then call me because okay, there is riots. a list of the people which are in the program okay. and they, okay, Teresa, can you help us? Okay. There is a policeman, so this is your chief and... Ah, uh, okay. This is like I am getting ready for my training, for my shooting training or for my uh, close Quarter battle, which is CQB. It's a special training for cleaning or building. This is my ballistic vest as well. So you can try, it's heavy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's really heavy. It's, um, so that's why you have to train your physical condition as well. So this is my complete gear. Oh. This is for night vision. So, this is complete. Okay. If I yeah. will turn off the lights and I will have a vision, I can see everything. Okay. So, yeah, you really this look is like a special forces. <laughs> yes, this is my training stuff. Okay, so this is what a civilian can do in a Czech Republic. <laughs> <laughs> Interviewing these people made me think. Luckily, in most of the European countries, we give a lot of importance to life. We are very lucky because it's not the same in every country. We are so ready to defend life that we are very scared of anything that could hurt another person. That's why in most of Europe it's almost impossible to carry a firearm legally. Unfortunately, in every country, also the safest one, there are always people who doesn't share our respect to human life. These people can hurt, rape, and even kill other human beings. When these people became violent, they can't always be stopped by the police. The laws against drugs have never stopped the trade and the use of drugs. The laws against guns have the same effect. The laws against the ownership of guns make us feel safer. But it's a fake feeling. These laws simply stop honest people from buying guns. The criminals obviously don't really care. The Czech Republic showed that it is possible for the citizen to be armed without increasing the number of crimes. The statistics about the public safety are very good. They have less robberies than Italy, Germany and even Sweden. The percentage of murders is similar to the neighboring countries and it's lower than Germany, Portugal, Australia and the majority of the countries in the Western world. Using firearms to defend oneself can be considered barbaric. In the 21st century, we shouldn't have to defend ourselves. However, what's more barbaric, defending ourselves or not having the right to defend ourselves? I hope that this video generated some kind of reactions. Let me know what do you think in the comments and see you in the next video. This is the freedom. Yeah. This is a part of the freedom. Only government that trusts its people and think it can be trusted by people, allow or don't ban people from having guns. Mm.